Uh, we are on air, and I think I just, uh, uh, yeah, we are. Ah, there we go. Okay, um, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Job from GitLab.com. I'm joined here with uh, Jacob, also from GitLab.com. And we've been hearing a lot of people saying that uh, GitLab takes a lot of time to install or is hard to install. So we made a bunch of tools uh, to make this much easier. And one of the coolest tools we have now is uh, GitLab Omnibus and uh, Jacob is the main developer of that. And we wanted to show you how easy it is and how quickly you can set up GitLab using Omnibus. Um, so Jacob, maybe you can tell us a little bit what Omnibus is. Uh, okay, Omnibus is a full stack installer um, for GitLab and that means that it contains not just GitLab but also Ruby, Postgres, Redis, uh, basically all the dependencies of GitLab in one package. Okay, really cool, really cool. Um, I guess the best way to do it now is to uh, show how we could use uh, Omnibus to set it up quickly. Yeah, let me start by uh, going to our downloads page on gitlab.com. Um, here you can see the download links for the latest versions. And to demonstrate the installation, I'm going to start a VM running Ubuntu 12.04. So the idea is that, that you, um, you download the Omnibus package in the VM? Yes, I'm going to download it in the VM and to make things interesting I'm going to restore it to a snapshot. If only I remember how to get to the snapshot. Why isn't this working? Um, Take me to the snapshots. The snapshot. no. uh, I need to restore it to a snapshot. For some reason, I cannot restore this machine to a snapshot. Um, what do we do? Okay, let's install it on CentOS instead. Uh, snapshots are working there. So we have a package for both uh, Ubuntu and CentOS, is that correct? Yeah. And it's the latest release of CentOS. Yeah, this is a build for uh, CentOS 6.5 64-bit. Uh, okay, so now my CentOS machine is up and I did a restore. Uh, and let's have a look at this uh, machine. I'm going to log in with SSH because I don't like typing into a virtual uh, virtual console. Uh, let's see. Nothing in the op directory. There is no Ruby. Pardon my Dutch locale. <laughs> uh, there is no Postgres. There is no nothing. So basically we have a clean machine now. Yeah. So I'm going to start now by downloading uh, the CentOS package, copying the link address, and I'll use wget. So as you were saying, the package basically contains entire GitLab. That's for the reason maybe why it's a little bit big. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, this package, uh, the CentOS package is 240 megabytes. And when it's extracted, it's uh, it's a lot bigger still. Um, so here's our package. Let me install that. So maybe you can explain what is happening right now. Uh, what this, uh, What's happening right now is that we the um, RPM tool is extracting the uh, the contents of the package onto the disk and then it will run a post install script and the post install script tells us to run the real post install script and this takes a while because we're uh, writing a lot of data to disk on a poor little virtual machine so we're getting there
Okay. Uh, and now we get to post install uh, greeting. Thank you for installing. And we're being reminded here of the post install com the command that does the post install configuration. And let, let's just see what happened now. Um, so in the opt directory, we now have uh, a new directory called GitLab, and it is quite big. It contains 700 megabytes of data. So that was the 240 megabyte package got extracted to 700 megabytes. And um, this directory called, contains a lot of programs. Uh, let me run the right command for you. So the, this package actually now contains things like Postgres. Uh, where's my Ruby? Ruby? I see Redis there as well. Yeah. So all of this is now contained in this one directory. Um, OK, so we're going to start now by, uh, actually, I'm going to follow the instructions in the readme. So it's, it's nice to see that uh, we always make a point to really keep our do uh, documentation up to date. And we usually follow our own documentation as well, as you can see uh, Jacob is doing. Yeah. So I need to create the configuration file for Omnibus GitLab first. And uh, now I need to uh, write in this file what the external URL is for this uh, virtual machine. And I'm just going to ex be accessing this virtual machine with its IP address. So let me use that. The external URL will be HTTP 172.228.171. So if you would have set up your uh, DNS with a URL, it would be www something something, right? Yeah, in that case, uh, it would look something like uh, gitlab.example.com. Yeah. But in our case, we, we, we have to use the, the, the plain IP address. OK, I'm going to start a screen session now, because that's always useful. And if we scroll all the way back up to the post install message, then we see the post install told us to run this command. So I'm going to do that now. And what's happening now is that uh, we're doing a Chef Solo run that is setting up all the different services inside the Omnibus package for this particular system. And uh, yeah, this takes a while because it's installing a lot of stuff. Let me show you what's happening in the meantime. Uh, so it's already got Redis up. And if we watch this, and we can actually see that it's slowly getting up Redis, Postgres. And in a little bit, we'll start seeing Nginx and Ruby processes. OK, but right now we're still doing the database initialization. This takes a while. OK, it's done. OK, now we've got our first Ruby process running, slowly building towards a full GitLab. And the last one to join is Nginx. And now we also have an Nginx. So basically, we got an entire GitLab installation almost running now. Yeah, all from one package. And this uh, this first in this installation uh, command takes a little bit longer the first time because it needs to write all the configuration files for this particular system and get everything going. I can already show you um, some more commands. So the uh, we now have a GitLab control command now that we've installed the package. And it has a built-in status command, so we can see that all the components that got installed are up and running. Um, I think that's all I want. I can show you about that right now. 
If we look at the process activity, we see that two Ruby processes are very busy right now. And we're going to have to wait for them to quiet down. So if we want to change the settings in the future, for instance, the external URL, we would have to run this command again. Yeah. The steps are always to um, edit GitLab RB and uh, then run the reconfigure command for the changes to take effect. OK. Uh, the reconfigure is done, and it looks like our rubies have quieted down. So let's try going to this server. We can't get in. I know why. What I forgot. Uh, what I forgot is the firewall. Got to allow HTTP traffic to this box, and there we go. And now we have a fresh GitLab install. So I need to type the one-time administrator password here. I'll get asked to come up with a new one. And we're signed in. There we go. And this is a fully running GitLab installation, um, identical to any other. Yeah. Um, it's it, it, yeah. It, um, it's not a standard, completely standard installation because there are some things that work differently in the uh, in the package. So internally, it's not un, uh, like all the others, but uh, in terms of functionality, it is. Let me show you by adding a project, say uh, Omnibus GitLab my favorite project right now, <laughs> and import it from gitlab.com. Do you see any typos? I don't. No, I think it looks good, Jacob. <laughs> OK. I'm not going to be adding an SSH key right now. We can see by the clone link that the external URL is set up correctly. Yeah. This is why we had to enter the external URL, because otherwise we would have a, a non-functional address here. OK, and here I am on my own GitLab server running on a VM. And all I had to do was install the package. Yeah, that's great. That was really, really fast. So maybe I can uh, talk you through what this Omnibus GitLab, uh, how this package is actually built. Yeah, for instance, it, it would be maybe nice to, some people might be interested in creating their own packages. Um, maybe you can walk us through a little bit that. Yeah. OK, the, the build instructions are, uh, are in here. Um, and uh, so what you need to create a package is, uh, when you install the package, you don't need any dependencies. But when you want to build the package, you need Ruby uh, and some other stuff on your machine. Um, so here we've documented the, the dependencies for building a package. In the case of Ubuntu, we need Ruby 1.9 and uh, the, some stuff from the build essentials. So I'm just going to install all of it. Uh, we need to make a special directory on the build server where the um, build products go. and uh, we need to make sure that our build user can write there. And then it's just a matter of cloning the cloning the package, running bundle install, and uh, setting off the build. And the instructions for CentOS are similar. I just do whatever it takes to get Ruby 1.9 installed. <laughs> and a clone, bundle install, and a build. And I can actually show you what uh, one of my build machines looks like if I can boot one. Uh, let's see, the CentOS build machine, maybe. Yes, it's booting. Oh, I'm too fast. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jakob, what, what would, would be a reason for someone to want to build their own package? Um, you might want to build your own package if you want to run it on an operating system that we don't support yet. Uh, for instance, right now we only have packages for Ubuntu 12, and if you're on Ubuntu 13 point something, then uh, you can just set up a clean Ubuntu 13 box, install the dependencies, and do a build. 
Uh, and that, that's maybe a lot of work for uh, a, a regular user, but uh, some people work in a, uh, want to run their GitLab situa a server in a situation where the server cannot reach the internet to download its dependencies. So then it's practical if you can do a build and then just ship the big package file to the production server. All right. Okay, so I've uh, managed to get into the build server I have here. This is a build VM. And uh, so what, all we have here, it looks very similar. We have the opt GitLab directory. There is a directory in var where Omnibus puts temporary files that are needed for the builds. Uh, it actually downloads all the dependencies that go into the package. For instance, uh, Ruby. Where's Ruby? Ruby dash there. So this is, the, these are just the contents of the Ruby source tarball. All these things get downloaded during the build. And the actual build happens in, um, in this Omnibus GitLab repo where I would run, let's see, git checkout master. Let's see if I can do a build on master and what let's see what happens. Build project GitLab. Again, pardon my locale. <laughs> Not sure why we get all these GNU make messages, but every build starts with it uh, on CentOS. Because I'm, this this build is now it's not in the, um, uh, it's not a clean build. Some of the stuff is already there, uh, some of the stuff that goes into the package, and only GitLab sees this and it only builds the stuff that has changed. And in this case, the only thing that has changed is the GitLab Rails app. So that just got pulled from uh, from the cloud, and we applied some local patches, and all that's happening here is that we are running break as it's pre-compile now. So basically you're saying that if you build your own package and you want to update it in the future, it's probably a lot faster because it's already, uh, it already did a bunch of steps and it won't repeat those. Uh, you, you could do that, but uh, for, uh, I'd rather, for, for a situation like that, I'd rather do a clean build. I think this ability to uh, only build the stuff that has changed is mostly useful during development of the package. So when you're trying out a new uh, uh, a new dis new instructions on how to compile something. So maybe I should show you this script now, which is very busy uh, generating a bunch of CSS files in JavaScript. Maybe I should show you where this comes from. Yeah, that would be cool. So. Here in the, um, there's really two two important directories in this project, and that's the config directory and files. Config is used during the build, and files contains files that are needed after the build, uh, after the installation on the user's uh, server. In the config directory, we have the definition of the project, the main definition, which lists the, the dependencies. So GitLab needs Git. Postgres, Redis, all this stuff. And it also needs something that we've called GitLab Rails. And that's the script that's currently busy. And that's in the software directory. But this is a software component. And this is the script that builds, uh, builds the Rails app itself. It has a number of dependencies. It needs Ruby, Bundler, libxml, um, yeah, this, this is, all, this is uh, if, if you've ever installed GitLab manually, this might uh, look familiar. Um, this, is the, this would be the opt-get install if you do the manual install. Uh, we are building the master branch that's specified here with this version command. This actually is a, a reference into a Git repo. And we're cloning the source from uh, GitLab Cloud. Here we have some special environment flags. They are needed to make sure that the package we're building is only linked against files that are also in the package. So we don't want a package that 
um, if we don't want it to get used to the to its surroundings on the build server, we want it to only look inwards inside the package so that when we drop it on the production server, it doesn't need any dependencies. Okay, and here's a bunch of patches that we had to do just to get the just to get the build working and smooth over some small issues with uh, rep with packaging GitLab like this. Um, an interesting step here is that we do an assets precompile. So the the main the Rails app does not contain compiled JavaScript or compiled CSS and um, picture assets or anything like that. So every time somebody does an installation, those assets need to be compiled. And this is wasting a lot of time for a lot of people. Well, they have to wait for Rake assets precompile. So I'm really uh, I'm really proud that uh, because we have these packages, we can do Rake assets precompile once for one platform, and then uh, everybody who installs the uh, everybody who installs GitLab later doesn't have to do that Rake assets precompile again because we did it once during the build. Yeah, that explains why it's so fast to install. Um, just when you install the omnibus package versus using, for instance, a Chevron. Exactly, you skip a lot of uh, you skip a lot of work that you would otherwise repeat on every server where you install GitLab, uh, because that's done at build time and not at installation time. So here's the assets precompile. Uh, what I forgot to point out here is bundle install. That's another favorite that takes forever. Uh, so now that takes forever on the build server and not on your server. <laughs> um, and then when we're done, we just rsync the results into the package directory and then they get packaged up there. So that's the main idea of what's happening here. So we've got this all set up for all the dependencies with little, with little patches here and there to uh, to make things work. So Jacob, uh, if people want to contribute to the development of Omnimus GitLab, how could they do that? Uh, well, they should go to the issue tracker and see if there are any open issues for them to work on. And um, if there's an issue, then uh, uh, comment and say that you'd like to work on it, and then we can see uh, how to get you started. Uh, and we can discuss how to implement it, because not every issue is, uh, uh, it, the issues might need explanation. So uh, drop uh, drop by in the issue tracker. And, in, uh, I get that, that is on GitLab Cloud, right? Yes, GitLab so that's the, issue, that's, a, that's the issue tracker on GitLab Cloud for the Omnibus GitLab. Uh, it has 15 issues or so right now, and um, yeah, I'm watching it, so uh, either comment on an issue or, or, or open a new issue and um, reach out to us. All right, great. Um, you were building a package, I remember. I suppose it will still take a while. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's um, that's still a little busy. Uh, maybe I can also show you the second stage. So I said there were two important directories. There's the config directory, which uh, describes how to build the package on the build server. Um, once the package is installed, we do this chef solo run. Uh, and the chef solo run needs all, all sorts of chef recipes, and they are here deep inside the files directory. So whenever you want to make something work in Omnibus GitLab, you usually have to work in two places, also two points in time, namely build time, so that's the config directory, and then you also have to work on the cookbook for the post install time. And here we have the recipes, for instance, where we set up GitLab Rails, we create a bunch of directories, uh, we create symlinks, and that's actually mostly it here. We only have to do all we have to do here is create directories and create symlinks, but they all have to be set up just uh, just right. And another important thing that's going on here is the templates. Something that we don't have yet uh, right now is uh, HTTPS support, and when that gets added, uh, the nginx templates will have to be edited and filled in correctly. So if you want to help out, uh, you will uh, you will have to touch uh, both the, um, the omnibus scripts in config and also the chef scripts in the um, in the files GitLab cookbooks GitLab directory. 
I think I think it's nice to uh, realize that we're now looking at the source code of Omnibus GitLab in a GitLab instance that has been built with Omnibus GitLab. Um, <laughs> in the beginning of this video, it it really uh, it really works really fast. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's a nice meta to do it like this. Um, another thing I should maybe show you is the directory layout, because this is something where uh, we see a big difference with the regular GitLab installation. Maybe it's interesting to talk about the differences with a normal GitLab. Yeah, because normally GitLab is installed in home git GitLab. Um, what about Omnibus GitLab? So for Omnibus GitLab, we are... Okay, I, I don't know why I forgot to say this up front, but uh, it's, uh, so Omnibus GitLab is based on Omnibus Chef Server, which is um, the, an Omnibus installer created by Chef Inc. to install their Chef Server app. Um, and all the structure you see here comes from uh, the way they did it. Um, and uh, in this structure, we have a, we have a different layout. Um, the application files go in opt GitLab, in our case. And that's the directory I showed you at the start. So for CentOS, that was uh, 700 megabytes of uh, binaries and Ruby files and what have you. Um, and then once uh, to configure the app, you put a configuration file in etc GitLab. Uh, we started with one file. There's now actually in there. Let me show you. There's a GitLab and a GitLab secrets. And GitLab Secrets contains some data that was generated automatically during the Chef run. And because this is a VM, I'm just going to show you what's in there. It's not so secret, and we're just going to destroy the VM anyway. Uh, what this contains is a random passwords for the database and a token used by Rails. I think this is something to do with the sessions. I think it's a session token. Or it's something used to sign uh, the sessions. So this is auto-generated configuration data. And if you would want to seamlessly go to another server, you would want to keep this data. And that's why it's in ETC GitLab RB. Or it, it's in ETC GitLab. So we touched this one and this one. Uh, far opt GitLab, this is where all the um, data that gets generated uh, by the app gets stored. Um, on this server, let's see. I'm going to become root because otherwise I cannot just walk in here. Uh, we have a git data directory. And that contains the repo I just import imported. Uh, we have a Postgres directory. which contains the actual files that the Postgres data database is being stored in. And we have similar directories for Redis, uh, Nginx, and uh, a directory that contains all the files that were written for the Rails app itself. So this is far off GitLab. And uh, th th so this is all specific data that's written, um, that's written by your GitLab installation. It's data you might want to keep around. And then there's a fourth directory for log GitLab, and that contains all the log data. And right now, this is a mix of two different kinds of log data. The um, processes like Unicorn are being managed by Runit, and they use the built-in Runit logging. So if you look in there, you see a file called current. And uh, so that, that's the sort of file you find there. On the other hand, the Rails app uh, opens its own log files that, are, that end in .log. And there's, there's a bunch of different ones. So there we have an application log, production log, satellite log. Um, so th there's a mix. Some of, the, some of the log files end in .log. And some of them are just simply called current and use the logging system of Runit. This is something that maybe we will consolidate in the future, but um, yeah, it, right now it's still uh, it's still simple. Simple. So that's that's the that's the layout. We have the 
uh, application data from the package. We have the application data that holds all the interesting application data that you care about. We have the configuration that you need to, re to rebuild your specific configuration. And then we have log data. So considering that um, it's so easy to install and it's uh, installed in different directories, um, in the end, we still have exactly the same functionality. And I'm already seeing in your readme that even the LDAP setup is uh, completely compatible with Omnibus, correct? Yeah. Uh, there's um, that's uh, that's a nice question. Thank you. Uh, the um, let's see, the way you usually configure LLAP in GitLab is in the configuration file called GitLab.yaml, and that has a nested structure. So you would have an LLAP section, and then inside LLAP there's options like enabled, host, port, UID, etc. Uh, this doesn't look exactly the same in etc GitLab, and that's because, sorry, this doesn't look the same in Omnibus GitLab, and that's because Omnibus GitLab automatically generates GitLab YAML for you. So with Omnibus GitLab, we need to tell, uh, tell it how to generate the GitLab YAML, and then it looks like this. So, so we're talking about the Rails app, GitLab Rails, and then we have this setting, uh, we have this section LLAP, and then in the LDAP section, we have enabled, host, port, UID. So these are exactly the same settings that are there in GitLab YAML, only you reach them in, a, in this different way. And this, this would be in the same file where we earlier set up the external URL. Exactly. So if we would uh, want to enable LDAP like this, I would start by copy-pasting this. And I would edit the... Uh, GitLab RB file, and okay, now my copy-paste skills are broken. So now we, uh, well, here's our new settings. Let me see, does that look correct? I think so. So then what we would do is save this and run GitLab control uh, reconfigure again. I'm not going to do that because, um, no, actually, I think I can do. I can even do that. These settings are wrong, so I cannot log in. But uh, at least you would see that um, uh, the LDAP sign-in is enabled. So this reconfigure run already went a lot faster now because it, for the most part, it didn't have to do anything. It's just listing what it would have done, but it's all up to date. There's still this step at the end that I hope to get rid of at some point. What is this step at the end, uh, Jakob? Uh, what's happening is, is it's uh, mig it's doing a d uh, database migration. Uh, so it's checking, it's loading the application data and it's um, the application code and it's checking if the database schema is up to date. And uh, that takes a while because it needs to load the entire application first. And the reason I want to get rid of it is because unless you just install the new package, nothing has changed in the database schema. So it's it's a bit of um, it's it's it feels unnecessary to me. So I hope I can get rid of it. Maybe uh, we are lucky, and one of our viewers uh, can contribute in some way to this. Yes, that would be awesome. Okay, it's reconfigured. I see. Yeah, I'm going to double check if it's still reloading because. Uh, Actually, that's a good thing to try. So when it's reloading, we get this. And that's because uh, one of the many parts of GitLab is uh, the part of GitLab that runs the Rails app is currently being restarted on a slow VM with only one core and not so much memory. So it takes a couple seconds. Nginx is still running. And this is Nginx telling us that it cannot find the Rails app. And by now, the Rails app is back. And I wanted to sh we want wanted to show the login screen, so now we have an LDAP sign-in screen, because we just enabled LDAP. Yeah. Can't sign in because uh, those uh, settings were fake, so I'm going to go back to the root user. All right. Okay. Awesome. I, we, we looked at the directory layout. 
Anything else we want to look at? Well, I think you uh, covered most parts, uh, Jacob. I think it's really impressive that you can set up GitLab so quickly. And um, even packing a new Omnibus package doesn't seem to be all that hard. Yeah, let's see how our build is doing. Oh, it's done. So now we have a new package. It's not, uh, I'm not sure if it's a very interesting package. Um, you know what, let's do something crazy and let's try installing this new package. Very brave. <laughs> Just for the fun of it. Um, I've got to somehow get it on the other server. Uh, I have a script for that. And the package I just built is this one. I'm pretty sure of it. Yes. For some reason, this, this takes a while. This is actually how, how I do my development. I have the two VMs, the build VM and the test VM. And uh, because I'm too lazy to set up file sharing, I run a little web server that serves the packages on the build VM and then on the test VM. I can download the package. Okay, let's check the version. Let's see what we have here. We have GitLab version 665. Um, this might go completely wrong. The the version number on um, on this package is off because it's not an official uh, an official package, but that should not. Okay, and now we get an error message because a newer package is installed. Let's turn off GitLab and find out how do we remove an RPM package. And install. This is some um, brave live debugging that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, this is showing how much I know about CentOS. Uh, RPM uninstall package. Oh, I must have looked looked for for this before. RPM dash E. Okay, back to the test machine. Okay, and now let's try installing the newer package. This would this would be a smoother write uh, normally because the version numbers wouldn't clash like this. I think no one told uh, <laughs> you, Jakob, that you decided uh, spontaneously to develop a new package. Um, yeah. Thank you, How to Forge. Okay, so it, we were at uh, version 6.6.5. Just to demonstrate that GitLab is really off now. Uh, now we're not even getting a nice error page because I also turned off Nginx. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, that went very fast. So you reconfigured now. Um, did you set the gitlab.rb? Uh, I did not change the gitlab rb, and I think I just, uh, because the, I didn't remove it, it's still on disk. This is going wrong now because uh, th this will fail. That's what you get for trying things live. Uh, because I forgot to start, start everything.
Okay. Life hacking away. This is not the official way to upgrade GitLab. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get this package installed. What are we looking at now, Jacob? Uh, we're now looking um, at uh, three Ruby processes being very busy, and I'm waiting for a few of them to stop, because if they stop being so busy, and they're busy here in the CPU column, if they're less busy, that means that they're ready to accept requests. OK, but. Looks like, oh, this looks better. I don't see busy rubies anymore. And now I installed the wrong GitLab version. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I guess we, I could give you a tour of GitLab Enterprise Edition now. Um, yeah. But uh, the idea is, is now that you, um, you package the new package. Um, I downloaded you... the package on the other server, and I installed it. And uh, I got upgraded. Wow, that's great. Okay. Is there anything else we should look at now? Uh, I think I think this is enough uh, for one. Uh, <laughs> before I make any up. more blunders. Before before you start life we developing on the air. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Jacob. Uh, I think it was a really nice demonstration of the possibilities of omnibus and. Um, probably even helpful to possible contributors and uh, to everyone watching. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.